Okay, so. The alcohol compensation makes also data and saturated cardinal compounds. And they do some of the same reactions that the carbonyl group and the carbon carbon pipeline would do by themselves. So if you make an alpha-beta cyclic carbonyl compound like this, you can reduce the carbon oxygen double bond, the lithium and hydride. Followed by making a workup. And now we're going to polar CO bond, but not the non polar CC bond. So we'll generate the alcohol. You can reduce the carbon carbon pipeline without reducing the carbon oxygen pipeline into catalytic production. This is carbon oxide, the atom catalyst, and pressure.
And it's that resonance structure that explains what happens when the sulfated electron reacts with that carbonyl compound. What happens is the electron donates to the end of the system. that inlay could be trapped in silicon halides.
Silo emulators are relatively stable to base, so you can do other reactions in the molecule in basic conditions and not have to worry about that falling off and then treat it with acid and it comes off very rapidly. So it's an alternative way of generating an enolate, and then you can either just quench that enolate with a proton, or you can react that enolate with either carbon or silicon electrophiles to generate silo ethers or just alpha alkylation products. And in this case, because the double bond starts out on this side, we get only the product of alkylation over here, but not the product of alkylation over there. We could have gotten the alkylation over here by simply starting with the double bond in the other position. So it's a nice way of generating a enolate in a specific location. And it only works at dissolving metal reduction to reduce carbon-carbon double bonds if the carbon-carbon double bond is in conjugation with carbon oxygen. So you might be asking yourself the question now, is that the only thing that can add to the far end of the alpha beta unsaturated carbon? We call this a 1,4 addition or a conjugate addition. It 
doesn't really look like a wooden floor with the product. Because there's nothing attached to the oxygen atom, right? This hydrogen is here, which is carbon three, not carbon, not oxygen one. But keep in mind that this keto enol tautometer. So what you're doing is you're adding the methyl group to the four position. What that looks like 
is a relatively small orbital antioxidant. Got a node here, node there. So you're looking at a relatively small orbital on the carbonyl carbon and a relatively large orbital here.
non-polar covalent bond has a difference of relativity of 0.4 or less. A polar covalent bond typically between 0.4 and 2. And then if it's greater than 2, we say it's an ionic bond entirely. So we're looking for a metal that has a higher electronegativity to make a smaller difference in electronegativity make the bond more covalent. And the answer is copper. Because it turns out that if you take two methyl lithiums and react it with cuprous iodide, or copper one iodide, you can actually make what we call a cuprate.
just as I did before, where I took that intermediate heat away from the dissolving metal reduction, and I track it with a silicon reagent to make a silo even easier, or I track it with an alkyl halide to make another bond. So this is actually a way that you can build up complex molecules fairly quickly. that's nice because it allows you to build up complexity pretty quickly from three relatively equal sized building blocks, which is what we call a convergent synthesis. Thank you. 